Hey everyone, I'm Asha. Welcome to another edition of the Girl Talk HQ Weekly Wrap Up. So I had a topic prepared for this week's video. It was completely different to the video that I'm actually bringing you. But then I had a meeting with a friend of mine this morning. Her name's Christina Johnson. She's an author, she's a speaker, she's a life coach, and she's just all around an inspirational woman. She has been to me personally. So I put aside the script and the notes that I had and I decided that I wanted to talk about feminine leadership, the art of feminine leadership. Women in leadership is a topic that I often blog about on my website, girltalkhq.com. The reason why I wanted to talk about the art of feminine leadership because what I've been taught by my friend Christina and by reading other people's articles and other people's journeys, other women's journeys, is that there is an art to it. Bit of a disclaimer, I am definitely very new to the business and leadership world. Uh, my background is in TV hosting and producing. I've been doing that for 10 years in Australia and in the US. And I find it really fascinating to see the world of leadership and how different it is for men and women. We're all familiar with the saying, act like a lady, think like a man. While it's funny and there's a movie out at the moment called Think Like a Man, I have a bit of a problem with that because if you're a man, by all means, think like a man. If you're a woman, don't think like a man. When you're a woman and you're thinking like a man and thinking the only way to get ahead in leadership is to think like a man, you're denying yourself and you're denying your own feminine values and skills to reach the top and it's only gonna be a recipe for disaster. When we think about the industrialized world, for the majority of history, it has been run by men. And now women, with the freedoms that we've got, we're now moving into our own, we're creating opportunities for ourselves, and it's definitely more of an even playing field, even though we're still kind of making inroads into various different industries. It's great because it's a new frontier for us, and I love that there are so many different role models springing up. Mary Barra, the first, female CEO of a major car company, uh, General Motors. You know, people like her make it possible for younger women to realize, oh, I can do that. It's traditionally a male dominated industry, but now that I see a representation, I can be that person. Okay, well, she's a woman and she's ascended to the rank of CEO. Did she think like a man the whole time? There's a good chance she didn't spend all that time denying her feminine leadership qualities to reach the position that she's in. I'm just putting it out there, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the money with that one. For us millennials, we are living in an exciting time where we're creating our own opportunities, both online and in the physical world, and people are becoming their own bosses, people are basically hacking and disrupting so many different types of industries, and I think it's great. I also think that being a millennial, we're more wired to see less of the gender differences, but we still have to be conscious of what's already been out there by the generations that have gone before us, specifically the baby boomer generation. The baby boomer generation are so used to those um, heavily defined gender roles, especially coming out of World War I or World War II with the setup of industrialization and consumerism, you know, the way that advertising was set up was marketed to women as the wives, the mothers, the homemakers. The advertising that was marketed to men were them being the businessmen, the bosses, the head of the family, the person in charge. It's definitely changed. It's more of a gray area playing field than it is black and white. The notion of a boss or a leader is no longer gender specific. In fact, no matter who you are, when you go into position of leadership, you shouldn't think of it from anyone else's perspective but your own. You know, as women, we have to look at the qualities that we bring to the table and not look at them as any less than or anything negative compared to a man's qualities. We should look at them as complementary. Men should bring their qualities to the table. We women should bring ours and they should just fit alongside each other very nicely. Speaking from a personal point of view and why the topic of feminine leadership really affected me is because whenever I'm thinking about my business and my blog and my career, a lot of the times I have the ideas of what I wanna do. I wanna be a successful blogger. I wanna make an income from this and I wanna do it my way and be creative and think outside the box. But then I look at the world set of values 
and they don't always fit in line with each other. There's this mindset that's already been in place in the world for decades and decades that this is the only way to be a leader, to be a boss, to be an authority, to be successful. And so now a lot of us, and I'm talking to especially women here, we have to kind of fight that system, I guess, if you want to call it, and try and find ways to inject our qualities into that and try and find a happy medium between the two. Now, of course, there's certain things that every person, man or woman, needs to do to be a successful leader, and that is study the marketplace, maybe get a degree in business. Those kind of things are just, you know, equipping yourself with the right skills. But when it comes to being a skilled leader, embrace all the qualities that you have, embrace the experiences that you've had and use them as part of your leadership. I think the reason why I like the phrase, the art of feminine leadership, is because it can be a very creative thing. We've got to learn how to balance all the traits that we naturally possess with the skills that we've learned along the way, balance them out and make for a very successful, prosperous, and fun environment to work in, whether you be a solopreneur, whether you work with a large scale company, it is a bit of a balancing act. Some of the things that I've learned along the way, which have helped me a lot over the last two years, is to equip yourself with mentors and friends and women in your community who are either in the same field or who can give you advice and help you along your journey. People who you can use as your sounding boards and give you suggestions and give you criticisms in a way that will build you up and help you be a better leader. I would also suggest keeping a journal, the things that you've learned along the way, bits of advice you hear. Yes, you wanna learn from other people and get the best advice you possibly can, but you don't wanna deny yourself. So be sure to include your thoughts, your inspirations, your musings, in the things that you write down in your journal because when you look back in a year's time, you'll be so inspired and empowered at the journey you've been on. Being a feminine leader is an awesome, powerful, and badass thing. So I wanna end this video and share with you a quote which I recently heard from another friend of mine. She is one of the executives on America's Next Top Model. And this is a quote she recently shared on Facebook and it's by Albert Einstein. He wrote this, Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will go through its whole life believing it is stupid. And the reason why I love that quote is it just points out how different everybody is, but we can't judge everyone according to the same narrow standard. Now, if you want to know more about the art of feminine leadership from an expert point of view, check out my blog, girltalkhq.com, because it is filled with stories, interviews, and profiles of women in a range of different industries who share their journeys, how they got to the top, the lessons they've learned along the way, and how they've mastered the art of feminine leadership. So check that out, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel, Girl Talk HQ, because every week I like to bring a different video each week talking about a topic I'm passionate about and something that I believe uh, deserves to be discussed out in the open. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you this time next week.